Hi, they're rock climbing humans. I have very interesting question for you. Okay. What is wrong with this knot? Which knot is better? So if I confused you, yay, because there is a difference between these two knots. Figure of eight. I was always wondering why people have trouble untying it after hard falls while I never had any issues. So I decided to make an experiment to find out. Okay, I give up. Turns out there are two correct ways to tie a figure of eight. Yes, two, and yes, they are different. And I'm gonna show you how a bit later. And I wanted to compare if one is easier to untie than the other. And then we have a bunch of sloppy ways of tying figure of eight. Starting from something like this, when you have inner strands overlapping. So this is obviously bad, but also having a knot which is loose to begin with. When you finish a figure of eight, you have one, two, three, four strands coming out of it. And I was always taught to pull each of them separately to tighten the knot perfectly. And what I see most people do after tying a figure eight, they tie it and they just give one tug and then go. So I was not sure if this makes any difference in how easy it is to untie the knot later. And this was the first thing that I wanted to find out. Okay, so the plan. Destroy my old climbing rope into many pieces and then tie a bunch of figure of eights on both ends where one end had a perfect figure of eight and then another one had a little bit loose one. Okay, so I have a bunch of test candidates. And then simulate a really hard fall and time how much it takes to untie each knot. And to make my experiment a little bit more scientific, I decided to make it blind. I marked all my test cases with little codes so that after I make drops, I can mix everything together and then untie without knowing which knot was good and which knot was bad. Mm, smart, I was so proud of myself at this point. But after I did the first two drops, I realized that the loose knot always has a really funky way of loading. So here was another fall on loose knot. The top strand does nothing at all. And so my blind test is not gonna be blind anymore because I can obviously see which knot was good and which was bad. But seeing how funky the loose knot loads... So during the fall, all the stress is going into this part of the knot. I was expecting it to be much harder to untie. So I repeated my experiment with all my test cases and 100% of the time the loose knot always tensioned in some weird ways. But after I tried to untie all of the knots, to my surprise, all of them were pretty easy to untie and there was no significant difference if the knot was very tight before or it was loose. At first I thought maybe my drops are not hard enough, but I did some quick math scaling my experiment to real life scenarios and I realized that if I would take such a hard fall in real life, my balls would probably explode. So trying to make it harder didn't make any sense. Instead, I tried to make multiple drops because in real life scenario we often fall many times on the same knot before we try to untie it. So I repeated my experiment. I thought if this shows nothing at least I will become a master of tying a figure of eight knot and then I will probably get some weight training. So repeated falls made the knot much harder to untie. I was literally getting pumped while I was untying them. Oof, I need to rest. 
but only few cases showed that bad knot was harder to untie than the good knot so it was not really statistically significant but before claiming that there is no difference between how much you tighten your knot before you climb i needed to test one more thing tomorrow The good knot, lobster, and this is what happened to the loose knot. The last strand actually jumped up. Yeah, so when it was loosely tied, the last strand jumped to this part. Looks weird. And on the tightened one, that didn't happen. So let's see if there is a difference at untying. Go. before trying to untie the other one. Okay, let's see if I can untie this one. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. 18 seconds. The good knot. The bad knot. The bad knot needs tools. Yep, so with different rope, which was a little bit thicker and stiffer, just after one hard fall, I was having really hard times to untie the knot, where the control knot, which was perfectly tightened, I had no problems untying that. Now the bad end. Oh yeah, a clear difference. Holy fuck. That's a massive difference. <laughs> I cannot do anything. <laughs> My fingers hurt to even try. Okay, there's a clear winner, I'm not even gonna try. Now you might wonder how loose my bad knot was. Not much. The way I was making these tests, I was tying a perfect tight figure of eight and then loosening it just a little bit. I'll loosen up the knot. So similar to what you might expect on real life scenarios. And in fact, after I started observing the knots after real life falls, this is what I got in the next two climbing sessions. So this is after real climbing fall, same shit, the last strand jumped over the previous strand. And to finish this experiment I wanted to see what happens after multiple drops on this different rope. And ooh baby, the results were really interesting this time, even after two or three really hard falls, the good knot was still easy to untie and in fact even easier than with the previous rope. Yeah. No problem at all. Although the loose knot was phew, impossible, like I needed tools to untie and after three hard falls I was 
working really long, really hard with the screwdriver to get the knot to untie. So seeing such a big difference between different brands of ropes, I really needed another rope to see what happens. But the only rope I had was my almost new climbing rope. And I have to say thank you for my channel members. Your support is why I destroy my ropes. And if you don't know what a channel membership is, click the little join button somewhere and you will find ways how to help me to make more of these videos. So this is the top knot, which was tightened. And this is the bottom knot. Same story. So, the good knot, super easy to untie. No problem at all. Bad knot, much harder, much, much harder. Okay, great. So, first conclusion tighten your figure eight. Really, tighten it. Then you will have way less problems. Next! Okay, now I need to figure out how to make the knot twist it inside. How do you guys do this? Another common mistake is to have overlapping strands inside the knot. This is obviously really bad, but I still wanted to see how bad it is. Okay, so I introduced some overlaps in one of the knots. Like here, it crosses over a little bit. So after I made my experiments, to no surprise, <laughs> I was not able to untie any of these knots. Oh my god, fuck this shit. So if you don't know how to tie a figure eight without having overlapping inner strands, uh, carry a knife. Next, I've seen people using variations of figure of eight where we take the tail and pass back through the knot. Something like this. So, three hard folds. Standard figure eight. Even after three hard falls, I can still untie it without big problem. That's it. Now Yosemite finish. So this was the extra loop, which people claim that you can pull it out and that loosens the knot. But good luck pulling it out when it's pinched here. So then you would need to hook something. Let's say a pinner and try to pull it out, but it's not that easy to pull it out. So all that theory, I don't know how much sense it makes. Actually, it's much stiffer. Okay, and finally the most interesting comparison is between these two. And I promised to explain what's the difference, so here we go. In one of the knots, the load strand goes on top of the knot. Let me loosen that up a little bit. So when you fall, the tensioning looks like this. While on this knot, the load strand goes in the middle of the knot. Let me loosen that up. If I can. So when you fall, the tensioning looks like this. Both of them are completely safe, but I wanted to see if there is a difference in how easy it is to untie each of them. So this strand, which was the load strand, was on top and it squeezed the knot like this. And in this case, the load line was in the middle of the knot. So, in my opinion, this knot looks much better, just visually. I don't know if there is any difference to untying. 
Let's try. So maybe let's start with what I think is better not. It's super easy, no problem at all. It just comes in done like so. Super easy. And now the other version. Ooh, it is, it is harder. It is definitely harder. Oh my God, this is stiff. Let's try with different ropes. So same situation. Load line goes on top. Load line goes in the middle of the knot. I will make sure that both ends are as tight as possible. As tight as possible. So different rope, same story. If the load line goes on top, it squishes the knot. If the load line goes in the middle, the knot looks like this. Same story with test case. Load line goes on top, squishes the knot. Let's start with where load line goes in the middle. And I see no problem to untie this. Now, load line goes on top. I can immediately tell you that it's much stiffer. <sighs> okay. Other one. Load line goes in the middle. I think I loaded this harder. So it's a bit harder to untie. But it took me just a couple of seconds to untie. Now load line goes on top and squishes the knot. Oh my God, no, <laughs> I give up immediately. Like this is so stiff. I can barely move any of lines. Yeah, this is crazy. So conclusion, make sure that your knot is tight to begin with, has no overlaps and that your load line goes in the middle of the knot. Then you will never have any trouble untying it. I promise. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you my favorite method of tying a figure of eight, which I learned from one Korean dude. And I call this a ninja method because it always ends up as a perfect figure of eight and it's super fast. Done. Just like that. So you see me in next video and I read you in the comments. Ciao humans.